In the 19th century, the Menai Strait in Wales forms a formidable obstacle for people traveling to Ireland. The engineer given the job of spanning this treacherous waterway is Thomas Telford, a 62-year-old self-taught Scot. By the time he arrived at Menai, Telford had a reputation as one of the finest civil engineers in Britain, be given this huge job to improve the main coaching route between Britain and Ireland. Telford considers constructing an arch bridge from cast iron. But he would have to use scaffolding to support the arch while it's being built. This would block the movement of ships along the busy waterway. The planners don't accept this. So Telford goes back to the first principles of bridge design. Rope bridges have been used to cross rivers since ancient times. And mountaineers like Mark Handford still use them today. So the most crucial thing in it, in any form of bridge, is the anchor point. So we've got the tree as a solid anchor. Without these anchors, the whole bridge is going to collapse. Two, three. Two, three. Two, three. Next, they pull Two, the ropes taut. Two, three. Two, three. Two, three. Stop. Pass it there. The bottom rope carries the load. The top ropes are for holding onto. Once you get a string, spring, uh, stringers on it, it'll be great. These are really good now. Yeah. Cool. It'll self-support then. Tying them together forms a rudimentary suspension bridge. It's fine for soldiers, but would hardly do for the London to Dublin stagecoach. Adding planks of wood to form a deck makes the bridge easier to cross. And iron chains allow it to carry heavier loads, but the deck still sags. To build a truly modern suspension bridge, the engineers must find a way to flatten the sagging deck. The answer is to suspend it from stone towers. Then extend the ropes downwards to level the deck. Telford now has a design that can bridge the Menai Straits. But he still has the problem of securing the chains at each end. If you think of pulling down that chain, it's going to give unless it's really firmly anchored. And that was Telford's challenge. Somehow, Telford must anchor the chains, not to the trees, but deep into the rocky banks on either side of the straits. To do so, workers blast their way through the rock to create an 18-meter long tunnel. At the end of the tunnel, they position strong iron frames. The end of the chains thread into the tunnel and are secured to the frame with three meter long bolts. Metal braces wedge the bolts and frame firmly into the cavern. The only way this anchorage can fail is if the rock gives way. Telford triumphs. The new bridge helped reduce the journey time from London to Dublin by nine hours. His anchorages have held the 177-meter deck in place for over 180 years. Today, it still carries thousands of vehicles every week. As the first great modern suspension bridge, it shines a light on the future. <laughs>